What's up everyone? I'm Dimitri Stanimirov and I'm a London-based SaaS entrepreneur and operator. I've been in the talent acquisition space for the better part of a decade, but spent the last couple of years building machine learning forecasting software for sales. After a brief hiatus, I'm back in the talent acquisition space, having recently joined Handshake, the world's largest early talent network, ascent of VMEA. In this podcast series, I catch up with some of my old industry friends and thought leaders to discuss the latest trends in the emerging talent space. I speak to some of our employer partners who provide tactical advice on how to best identify, attract, and engage early talent. And lastly, I chat to some of my colleagues here at Handshake, giving you a behind the scene peek into how the world's fastest growing edtech company is being built. So we always start with a brief introduction. So welcome to the show, Catherine. And yeah, as I said, we'll start with a brief, brief introduction. So if you don't mind telling us who you are and maybe giving us a quick intro to FBM Group as well, that'd be awesome. Yeah, great. Thanks, Dimi. And great to, to kind of be involved today as well. So um, my name is Catherine Brewster and I work at a company called FCM Group as the UK University Partnerships Manager. So I manage all of our um, relationships, our partnerships with universities um, based within the graduate recruitment um, part of FDM, um, but focus very much around that attraction piece, building those effective um, relationships and partnerships with universities across the UK as well. So um, FDM, we are a, an international organisation um, and we um, work within the recruit, train and deployment sector of business and technical consultants. So the graduate part of our business is our largest part of the organisation. Mm. We do have additional um, roles within X Forces and a returners programme as well. Um, my specific role is based within, within the graduate space. So we um, in the UK, we tend to hire around a thousand graduates a year all throughout the year into our business, onto our programme, as they go through the recruit, train and deployment model. So um, individuals come in from a broad range of degree backgrounds um, and uh, we'll begin with training in our academies, normally physical training in the academies, yeah. um, albeit virtual at the moment. And then once they've completed their training, they'll go and work in a variety of different technical or business consultancy roles out with our clients um, across the UK. And that model is, is obviously in, in our other global regions. As well. Yeah, amazing. So you said you, you, you hire um, around 1,000 graduates each year, which is a huge number. Um, and um, I thought a good place to start the conversation would be to give us a flavor of how we actually go about doing this. Because as I said, 1,000 mm -hmm. graduates is, is no joke. It's, it's, a, it's a high number. So maybe, <laughs> maybe give us an insight into what your team looks like, you know, what the strategy looks like and I appreciate that obviously what do you make of that historically might not be the case this year mm -hmm. maybe going forward so maybe start start there and then and then we'll take it from um, from, from here yeah no absolutely so um we have a within my team so um as I said we're part of the graduate recruitment team um, and about half of our graduate recruitment team in the UK are part of our university partnerships team so we have about um, 15 um, people in the team spread across um, London, in the Midlands, in Leeds and in Glasgow. And um, these individuals are graduate recruiters, but are also responsible for a specific caseload of universities and obviously meeting and engaging with, with those students um, to, to obviously raise the brand of FDM. But also a big part of what we do is about helping people understand that a career in technology is there for everyone. It doesn't mm. just have to be you've studied a technical or a STEM-related um, subject as well. So prior to, to COVID and um, all, all the changes that happened over the past 11 months or so, we would tend to deliver about 400, 450 events um, a year out on campus um, with universities. And we, um, we partner with... Um, with many universities all across the UK. So about 60 um, close kind of partners across the UK, but recruit from you know, all different um, institutions as well. Um, and um, engage at some level, probably with about 80 to 90 different universities. So yep. um, the activities we were doing would be obviously, um, you know, traditional careers fairs, employability workshops um, as well. But we also um, do a number of curriculum based projects where we go into, you know, particular courses, present live project briefs and, you know, work with those students on, on a real life project 
um, as well. Um, we also have started to do more sessions around, you know, decoding what a career in technology could actually look like, mm-hmm. you know, particularly for, let's say, students from a humanities background, you know, saying, OK, well, how can some of those skills that you've gained in your degree or your areas of interest really help you in, in you know, transitioning into a career in technology? And how can we build your confidence within those, those areas um, as well? Um, we also would do, you know, various kind of pop-up stands on campus as well, um, be involved with um, curriculum and uh, some industrial advisory groups as well. Um, but our main strategy is, you know, to really work effectively with universities and in a partnership model so that yep. you know, we know what they're trying to achieve and understand their particular university, but they also work with us and, and help us yep. to achieve what we want to do. Um, as well and it's very much a kind of data-driven approach yep um, yep partnerships as well so how so you, you mentioned you, you you know historically you would do around 400 to 450 events per year which is mind-boggling by the way it's, it's such a yeah. huge number <laughs> um and so how many did you actually manage to do this year if, i mean I'm, I'm i'm asking about physical events um mm-hmm. when when did covid kind of catch you and it was like okay no more events yeah, I assume the events happen throughout the year, right? Not just um, uh, during the academic year, but. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So at, at FDM, we recruit all year round as well, which I think is an added kind of um, benefit and challenge. So, yeah. um, you know, we aren't just, we can't just be active on campus at one particular point in the year because we yeah. don't technically have a deadline. You know, we're recruiting all, all throughout the year as well. So we were on campus, I think we did, um just under 100 events, um, you know, January, February, and the very start of March. So we were kind of out on campus up to the point we could be. And then we very quickly obviously had to switch to to virtual events. Um, We, you know, almost overnight, just like everyone did, really. Yeah. And uh, and so we had done some physical events in 2020, um, but then obviously had to switch quite quickly to virtual and also had a number of events just like everyone else did, kind of pre-booked into 2020 that we had to obviously decide could they go ahead, could they not go ahead, if they did, in what format um, as yeah. well. Yeah. And so let's talk about, you mentioned a big part of the, the event strategy revolves around career fairs as well. You said you work closely mm-hmm. with 80 to 90 different universities and those are um, academic institutions that the team would actually go and, and, and visit. Um, yeah. Obviously, none of that happened this year. Um, so it'd be good to talk about what he did. Um, um, you know, disclaimer, you're one of our early partners. So uh, part of the strategy revolves around the use of handshakes. So it'd be good to talk about this and anything else that, that you guys did uh, and, and how that actually affected your overall hiring numbers. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. So in terms of careers fairs, I think um, careers fairs work, you know, in the physical sense, worked well for us because... Um, I always see a careers fair as one particular element of the partnership. So, you know, we don't just say, oh, we'll do all these careers fairs and we'll be fine. We'll hit our hiring numbers. It's about, you know, a careers fair is almost the start of the the relationship and the engagement with the students. But I think one of the things that works so well for us in terms of a physical careers fair is that we recognise, you know, we are we hire in large numbers we, you know, we do have um, some brand out on campus, but we're not a massive kind of household name that everyone is aware of and, you know, knows the opportunities as well. So um, one thing that my team do really well and, and we really do um, focus on is actually when, you know, you're at a physical careers fair, actually we, you know, we're really proactive. We don't just sit behind a stand <laughs> where out and say, you know, have you thought about a career in technology? This is what it could be like for you. And, you know, just really help to to show students what the opportunities are that are out there. And I think when we switched to some of the virtual careers fairs, that element for us was was really lost um, because you're kind of sat there waiting for the students to come to you. We couldn't necessarily proactively go out there and engage with them and actually say, you know, you might not have considered a career in technology before or even thought it's for you, but here's a little bit of information, just see what, what you think. And, you know, if you're interested, we'll be on campus again in, in a few weeks' time as well. Um, so I think that particular part on some of the careers, virtual careers fairs platform, we have found is, is really missing and has 
you know, in, in some senses really reduced actually what we've been able to get from some of the virtual careers fairs. Um, with the Handshake platform, I think it, it has really helped us when we've done some careers fairs through obviously the Handshake platform because we're able to actually proactively, even before the event, you know, be approaching those students um, and, you know, sharing opportunities and, and actually in, in control a little bit more of, you know, how effective that event could be for us um, yeah. as well. Um, and even just, you know, some events through Zoom or Teams platforms have kind of enabled that um, as well. But I think the the whole kind of um, campaigns and the segment piece as part of the handshake um, yeah. platform has really helped us in being able to proactively engage with those individuals. Could you, yeah, could you elaborate on this? Because what you said is very interesting that kind of doing a career fair through Handshake has almost made it, made the the, the, the whole thing more effective. Could you explain, because I think, you know, there'll be people listening probably who actually have not used Handshake and this notion mm-hmm. of building segments and targeting certain audiences might be a little bit lost. It might be worthwhile explaining what you actually meant by this and how this becomes more effective. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, we use the platform not just for careers fairs, but for a number of our events. And so the segments um, allow us to, you know, target a particular group of students um, that we might be wanting to engage with. Um, so we can, you know, really break it down to a particular group or multiple different groups so that we can, you know, get the message across in the right way to those individuals um, as well. And then um, with the campaigns, it enables us to really you know, um, send some quite targeted um, promotion or information to that segmented group about a particular event. So when we're going to a careers fair, a virtual careers fair through the Handshake platform, we can actually run a campaign prior to that careers fair so that, you know, we can, you know, ensure that actually those students are going to then engage with us throughout the event and actually continue to be more proactive throughout the event as well rather than just kind of waiting for individuals to come to us yeah and and in terms of if you don't mind us getting into the nitty-gritty of this you you have run uh, around 30 um different campaigns so far mm-hmm. um on handshake um you have sourced over thirteen thousand students so far and you know that, that's super impressive and if you look at actually your engagement numbers they're very high so would you mind talking a little bit as you know you, you said you, you craft the messages to engage with students could you perhaps share um what has worked in terms of the messages length what do you guys say and maybe things that might have not worked um so well so far just kind yeah, of curious so to get into the the tactical side of things yeah um we so we have done quite a lot of work generally kind of internally as well to understand you know from that digital sort of marketing perspective as well mm-hmm. what could work effectively um, as well. So I think what we, you know, it's about not overusing the campaigns. So not, you know, using them so much that they aren't effective enough. Yeah. It's about really breaking down, okay, within our particular segmentation, actually, is this particular event or is this particular fair something that is relevant to those people? So it's not just doing a big kind of blanket message out to everyone. Um, and also we we, you know, we have discovered that I think being really specific with what it is, you know, if it's a careers fair, you know, what are the particular opportunities you have? What are the particular areas you're hiring into? Who are the the staff who are going to be there? Adding that personal element, adding, you know, a photograph of the individuals and their name mm. as well um, has really helps. But I think being really specific about what it is that you're, you know, why it is you're engaging in that event? you know, for us, you know, people we're looking to recruit, but also what it is that those individuals can gain from either engaging with us or from coming to one of our events and why that matters as well. Um, And one thing that we, you know, have started to look at a lot more as well as, you know, time's gone on is actually looking to say, okay, well, let's not just try and promote everything to, you know, all these different people, but actually really break them down to say, okay, well, these particular events that we're doing will really be of interest to this particular student group. So let's not worry too much about trying to have loads and loads of people engaged, but actually have relevant people mm. um, with those events as well. Um, and we started doing kind of digital boot camps, which I'll talk a little bit more about later, but we started doing digital boot camps um, and adding to that digital boot campus things went on 
And now instead of just adding all to this one program of events, we want to break it up so that there's lots of different topics so that students can tap into the bits that are interested, you know, are interesting yeah. to them. Yeah, Let, this is actually a good segue to talk about the digital boot camps. And, you know, you and I have spoken previously a lot about upskilling and um, I've had a number of conversations actually around the 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 broader sense that a lot of students are getting of doom and gloom, obviously, all you hear in the news is recession mm-hmm. and lack of opportunities, et cetera. But, but the truth is, you know, there are plenty of employers such as yourself who have thousands of vacancies um, mm-hmm. available. And so I wanted to kind of get your perspective on this. Um, I don't know if you saw uh, last week we we had uh, Dan Doherty from uh, from Cap Gemini on the podcast, and he, he kind of expressed the same sentiment that he kind of feels that just – advertising lots of opportunities perhaps in a time when they're not the many um, and and having people apply to them only to then be rejected um, feels like the the wrong thing to do kind of showing someone a hot meal when they cannot have it and they're starving I think that was his mm-hmm. analogy um, so kind of wanted to get your perspective on this and also what you guys have been doing with upskilling kind of getting people who might not be let's say on paper um, the right mm-hmm. fit for the job but ensuring that they can get there with your support yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. So in terms of the, um, you know, the opportunities, we we did we did have to reduce um, some of our recruitment numbers slightly last last year um, due to basically making sure we could really focus on supporting the graduates we had on our graduate programme. Um, we did we were still, you know, recruiting, but just not quite at the level in 2020 as we would normally. Um, that number is back up to the normal volume for 2021, which I'm really pleased, pleased to say. Um, we didn't actually have to we didn't retract any offers you know there were a few people we've delayed their start dates they started maybe a couple of months later than than the originally planned um but no offers have been retracted as well and I think what was really important for us throughout 2020 and into 2021 is that you know we are sharing that message a lot you know we're sharing it with our university partners with our um with the you know careers teams working within those universities because you know, they want to have and they need to have those good news stories to kind of share with their students as well to fight out, you know, all the noise of the negativity yeah. that's going on as well. And I think we just need as, a, as an employer to be really open about the fact, you know, we have these opportunities and, and consistent with that message um, as well. And, and one of the ways that we've really started to do that is, um, as I mentioned, the digital boot camps, you know, we, we yep. were starting to do this anyway out on campus um, mm-hmm. but actually the virtual transition of the event has actually allowed us to develop these even further and what we want to do is you know give students the opportunity or graduates the opportunities to really develop their technical skills because I think it's becoming more and more obvious that that is the way you know professionals are going you, you yep. need to have a certain level of kind of technical skills and so instead of just saying that to people we actually want to give them you know events and and boot camps so that they can really develop those skills you know they can almost develop a little bit of an interest or a taster in something to then have the confidence themselves to maybe develop that a little bit further in their spare time um, and actually link those activities to saying okay well because you've engaged in that you know we're really proactive we're really um interested in you know working with you proactively on how we can support you to kind of go on to apply to to FDM as well. So I think it's it's about keeping a constant message that we do have yep. opportunities. We are recruiting, um, and we have the roles obviously for our consultants with our clients as well. But also providing you know those boot camps so that students who might not think those technical roles are for them can gain tangible skills so yep. that they feel confident to go on to apply to those yep. roles um, yep. as well. That's incredible. So kind of, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but what I'm hearing, this is a great way for you to A, C, well, kind of expand the talent pool, if you will. Mm-hmm. And yeah. and it, it's, you know, kind of, you know, what I'm, what I'm taking away here is that even, you know, this is not going to work for everyone, right? Not everyone who goes through the bootcamp is going to be a suitable fit for FDM. But nonetheless, they will take away some skills that they can take elsewhere and start a career elsewhere. Yeah. So it's kind of a win-win for everybody here, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And what is, um, there are a few sessions we've developed, particularly ones around Excel as well. My team, some of my team, um, who I'm sure they won't mind me saying, weren't the, you know, um, most technical people, weren't the, you know, um, best people at Excel, you know, prior to it. But actually they 
worked with some of our trainers and developed some of their skills themselves over a period of time. And they're now the ones delivering the sessions. And I think that's quite unique as well, is that the people delivering the sessions to these students have been in the similar situation. Mm. Themselves. Say, look, three months ago, I, I, you know, I knew a little bit like everyone does, but I didn't know kind of this in-depth information. And this is how you could, you know, use it in your everyday life and, and develop the skills further as well. So I think that helps on the confidence piece. Um, yeah as well that's incredible and we're kind of coming um we're beginning to run out of time so i wanted to, to touch uh, on one final topic which is uh you know what happens this year so um mm. we kind of spoke briefly about this before we started recording but you know they're kind of two polarizing views one is uh, come summer everything's back to normal when we're going back to campus you know the other one is mm, maybe not uh, i mean we saw it kind of last year when that was the message don't worry this is going to go uh, way by by uh, the fall when we're going to be recruiting on campus. Um, and so I know I've spoken to you about this before uh, and, you know, your view kind of is like, even if we're fully back to normal, which again, you know, to be seen, but, um, you know, you shared with me that um, based on your experience last year, um, you will still keep a, a large part of your strategy fully digital. So you'll be curious to, to kind of have you elaborate on this and also share, you know, what 2021 looks for for you and the rest of the FDM team? Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, who knows when we'll be allowed out our homes and you know back onto the campus as well. Um, in terms of that piece, we just have to go by what's safe and when it is safe for our team to go back onto campus. Um, we we will absolutely. We had an event a few weeks ago with our university partners, and we did say you know we absolutely will be back on campus. You know, um, delivering events on campus to students in person as well um, and I think that is an important part and is a bit everyone really enjoys as well you know meeting people face to face as well but what um, we have really learned is that actually this digital offering is something that we will continue with um, and it provides for a few reasons one is that from a you know from a business perspective we can actually you know run an event for maybe an hour or a couple of hours engaged with students throughout the UK, you know, throughout the world, really, um, through the powers of Zoom or whatever platforms um, we have as well. And and actually, you know, run a session, engage with lots of students all in one go um, and, you know, deliver those those, those sessions and those digital boot camps um, as well. And I think actually the whole sharing the screen piece really helps sometimes when you're learning yeah. some more technical skills as well. Um, it also, um, you know, allows us to, to deliver more events and, as I said, engage with more students as well. So um, in, in my view, I think we'll always maintain that digital element. And actually, some students will prefer to engage with us in that way. Yep. You know, they'll feel more comfortable and secure, um, you know, putting themselves out there if they're, you know, in the comfort of their own home and behind their, their, their laptop as well. Um, but we will obviously go back onto campus um, yep. as well can can do so so I think yeah. we'll take you know that that kind of mixture mixed approach um as well but we have learned so much about the events we did last year you know at first we were just kind of like everyone thrown in the deep end you know <laughs> had to everything to be virtual and, and online but actually once we got things up and running we were able to refine okay well which sections are of most interest to people um, what's the feedback? We gathered a lot of feedback from from attendees and from people running the sessions as well. And so I feel we've really kind of perfected the art of delivering some of the virtual sessions as well, and we'll continue to do so. And so yep. they'll always um, continue, um, in my view, yep. as well. What well, what has been the final question for me here? What has been, would you say, the biggest takeaway? One of the things that we've heard from um, from other partners is that you know, with the proactive outreach, you know, especially in the current climate where it seems that there are literally no jobs available. When you do reach out to a student, you know, they do get very delighted by the fact that, you know, they're not applying, but they're reaching out. So, you know, that has been one of the messages that we've heard a lot. But is this something that you've seen in your end? And and um, um, what else have you actually seen? What has been the biggest takeaway? You know, so you've learned a lot throughout the year, running those events, yeah. contacting people proactively, hosting large sessions on Zoom, et cetera. What, what have been the big takeaways? Um, I would say the for us the, the the focus on the technical content has really stepped up. I think um, 
we're, you know, we're, we're very clear we want to deliver content for, you know, non-technical people to do to be able to develop some technical skills. We're also keen to develop more content, which is, you know, technical content for technical people as well. And I think they are kind of some key areas that we're really keen on, you know, um, have have developed so much over the past um, few months as well. And we'll continue to, you know, understand the importance of those sessions. And um, we'll still obviously do the employability content, you know, how to um, successfully complete and pass a video interview. But I think that technical space, you know, we have a duty as a, as a tech employer as well to be delivering that content. Sure. Um, so I think that's um, one of them as well. And also, actually, the digital sessions have enabled us to, you know, when we look at the, the data of the people who have attended our events, it's a real kind of dynamics of people. Of, you know, I think we lost. Catherine, but hey, uh, it was my very last question. So this is probably uh, a good time to end the, the show today. Um, thanks everyone for tuning in and hopefully um, Catherine will be back for another episode in the coming months. Have a good one. 